Welcome to today's 3D print. The pleasure today is TiVo Flash. Stay tuned. Alrighty, here are the parts out of the box. More foam. We have nice, really? You're gonna boomerang on me? Nice heavy duty springs and some twist knobs. Oh, those are the bed knobs. Um, Hammer nuts, probably for the end stops, because there would be M stops on this. Um, your primaries to bolt your gantry into your base. Tools, instruction manual, putty knife. Is it still unsharpened? Yeah, it's still an unsharpened putty knife, so it's worthless. <laughs> um, it is an AC heat bed with insulation, aluminum, and glass. It's a custom glass bed, but it is permanently attached. You can't remove this glass. So that's an interesting design choice on their part. So we'll see. Um, nice, oh Jesus. Hit it twice. <laughs> um, solid Y carriage plate. It uses the same multi-direction 90 degree shift pulley system that the TiVo Michelangelo uses. Same screen knob and LCD array that the Michelangelo uses and the same inductive end stops that the Michelangelo uses. I like that. They milled out cutouts in here for the gantry to sit in. I checked, it does fit, so they did cut them correctly. And it also uses 40-40 aluminum all around, so they are justifying the higher price of this printer. So this printer is more of a competition of the CR20. This printer as configured is probably 350, 360 bucks. It all depends on if it has the um, TMC 2100s inside. Okay, the gantry. Dual Z, but for whatever reason, they chose to connect the Dual Z with a belt up top. I'm not sure why they did that. I would like to get rid of that belt and get rid of both of those bearings so that these Zs are uncaptured, but we're going to leave it alone at first and see how it prints first. I think the belt was a bad choice and capturing these was a bad choice. Unless this is perfectly assembled and perfectly aligned, you're going to get Z banding, or at least some strain, but we'll see. It might be okay. Um, I do love the metallic red uh, anodized finish. It is absolutely gorgeous. Creality should take some notes from TiVo on this. Stop using those stupid blue plastic strips in the printers and start doing stuff like this because it's actually beautiful and classy. This is even nicer than the Tornado. This is this is really nice. This subtle. It's not like an in-your-face like the um, Alphawise U20. So that's interesting. Stay tuned. This appears to be one of the nicer models. It has the BL touch on it, and it's mostly assembled. If you have the lower end model, like the one that I ordered, um, you'll be building that one. So it'll be a full on assembly, even more assembly than the CR uh, Ender 3. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the springs in and the bed adjustment knobs in. Next step is to put the vertical gantry in place. There are milled cutouts where the verticals fit in place, and then you screw them in from the bottom, like typical with these construction printers. And I like how it's sitting all the way in the back here, so you have a nice clean front. I do like that. That should also avoid the problem of these cables snagging on the corner like they do on the Tornado. That won't happen on this one. That's good. So, although I do not like the way this heat bed wire can fall down behind like this. Because now your bed is not going to be able to go forward. See how it catches? Okay. So, that's a no-no. That'll rip those wires right out of that heat bed. So, you're going to want to make sure that this stays over here. And I will probably make a um, a little something to put on here. How far back does it go? What the hell? What am I catching on? What the hell? What the hell? Oh! <laughs> it was that. Yeah, the gantry was too low. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to want something on here to make sure that this wire cannot catch over here. That would be devastating. It would tear the heat bed wires right out of this printer. It doesn't look like it wants to. It looks like it wants to stay over here. But that's going to be something you're going to want to keep an eye on. Gantry's installed. Now it's time to wire it up. Alrighty, it is done. I went through the leveling process, which is basically you tell it to auto home. 
and then you adjust your Z level down on here until the nozzle's zero, zero. Then you go to the four points, bring the bed up until it's about the right distance from the, um, the nozzle. Basically, you're setting your Z offset, and then you store that in the settings. The instructions are pretty clear on how to do that. It's very easy. And then after that, it does its nine-point check on your bed and gets your mesh, and it printed first time, no problem. I will show you test prints after I'm done, but I've got to slice a spool holder for this because the dork wads didn't include a spool holder. Yeah. <laughs> well, here are some of the prints that I made on my TiVo Flash. Um, this is actually pretty beautiful. It's a PETG sample from, I think, IEC3D. Came in the alien box. That came out really nice. You can actually see through it. Hit that with some clear coat and you'll probably turn this into glass. That's pretty neat. Maybe one of the wavy vases from Fierez 3D, I think it is. But that's Tony Jackson loves printing these. And that's okay. The um, six sided vase. Actually, the prints are coming out pretty clean. The noise that I was getting in the prints turned out to be the Y-axis stepper with the gear on top that connects to the belt. It was out of alignment just a little bit, and so the belt was rubbing the top of the gear, which was causing a stuttering. Uh, not a stuttering, but every time one of the teeth would snap off of the, you know, skip off of the edge of the pulley, it would add noise, and that would transfer to the print. I was getting really bad prints. And, um... I, all I had to do was shift that gear one millimeter. Uh, I think it was up. Yeah, one millimeter up. So the belt rode in the middle of the gear pathway it's supposed to. All the problems went away. Um, very nice. Vases. A PETG vase. Because that hurts. Metallic graphite. A little water in the PETG. This needed to be dried. But in general, nice print. I think this is on that. No, I'm sorry. This is the Ender 3. That one was the um, TiVo Flash. I also printed the Melted Lollipop. I thought that came out really cool. There's your Melted Lollipop. I also did one in silver. Not bad. I'm having a good time with it. Um, I do plan to upgrade the printer. I'm going to um, add two noise blocker fans. And I'm going to have, because these are less throughput than the fan it comes with, I'm going to have one going in and one going out. I actually got a hole saw. So I'm going to cut two holes in the brain box cover and put the two fans in and then use a buck converter to drop the 24 volts to 12 volts that these fans will run properly and my TiVo flash will be absolutely silent because the steppers are they make like no noise <laughs> it's really impressive how quiet the machine is just the fan is noisy the hot end fans are actually not bad they're pretty quiet it's the brain box fan that's noisy so these are going to replace that and I'm also going to put two 40 millimeter fans on the hot end or one 40 millimeter fan on the hot end the actual hot end fan is an on off fan, so I can buck convert that down to 12 volts. But the parts cooling fans are need to be speed controlled. So, although I typically run my fans on or off, so I might be able to buck convert those as well. I'll lose speed control, so I'll have to run them at zero or 100%, but it will be absolutely silent. So, I want to see just how quiet I can make one of these printers. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed these prints. They came out quite nice. I am very pleased with the results. I will see you guys later.